Hi guys. So a topic that I often see covered um, in social media, things like TikTok or Instagram, um, is the topic of endometriosis. So I thought I might just come on and give a overview from a health professional point of view. So um, period pain or abdominal pain is extraordinarily common. Um, and it doesn't also, all, always necessarily mean that it's pathological or abnormal. So, you know, that's the job, I guess, of a health practitioner is to try and decipher what is within the normal range versus what is outside of the normal range. So endometriosis is a disease process where the lining of the uterus, which we call the endometrium, so the endometrial lining, is growing in places other than the lining of the uterus. So it can grow through the muscle of the uterus. So imagine the uterus um, is like a balloon and there's layers of the balloon. So the inside layer is the endometrium and then you've got myometrial muscle layer. So when the endometrium is going, growing through that layer or you can have endometrial lining growing in the cervix or on an ovary or in a fallopian tube or on, a, on the bowel, it can grow in locations that it's not meant to. Now, we don't fully understand why this happens or the frequency. We don't you know, have a really good understanding of the frequency of it because we suspect actually it's reasonably common. Um, but the interesting thing is that some people can go their entire life ha having had endometriosis, which might get discovered, you know, incidentally when they've had, they're having an operation or something else, but it's not caused them any symptoms. So again, we're not really sure why some people get very symptomatic and others don't. Um, now, endometriosis can present as severe um, menstrual pain or um, because it, it bleeds, it actually responds to hormones. So you can have intra-abdominal bleeding or you can have excessive heavy menstrual bleeding if it's you know growing within the muscle layers of the uterus. Um, but pain is one of the sort of you know major features of it. One of the other potential features of it would be um, infertility or fertility issues, subfertility because it's growing inside the fallopian tube or it's growing on an ovary. So the egg doesn't have a clear path to meet with the sperm and then fertilize and land in the, uh, in the uterus. So fertility issues is one of the other features. Now, sometimes I might have a patient who has, you know, quite bad menstrual pain and it's in my mind. I'm thinking, oh, could this be endometriosis? Could this just be what we call primary dysmenorrhea, which is, um, you know, bad period pain um, with no other cause identified? And so the workup around that would be ultrasound. Now, unfortunately, ultrasound does not diagnose endometriosis. Sometimes you might see signs of it. You might see something called an endometroma, which is like a growth on the on the ovary but not necessarily. So the gold standard for diagnosis is a laparoscopy, which is surgery. That's keyhole surgery, putting a camera into the tummy, abdomen, I should say, into the abdomen um, or pelvis to have a look to see whether there's any sign of endometriosis growing. Now, yes, it can be burnt away, but you can never fully remove all of the endometriosis because it can be microscopic. It can be not visible. Um, these are cells that can seed and then they can grow over time. So um, whilst, yes, you know, laparoscopy and having it excised is part of management, particularly if it's quite severe or if there's lots of it growing, um, it's, not the, it's not the only thing that would be done we often would offer um, hormonal management. So what does that mean? That means um, putting somebody on something like the birth control pill because we know that that will um, prevent or control the growth of the endometriosis. So, um, you know, sometimes I might see um, on TikTok, you know, um, the, I guess, the lay person saying, "Oh, I, I've got my, I've got terrible period pain, and you know, um, my doctor's only response is to go on the birth control pill." Well, it's not that that's their only response. It's because we know that that is a really effective way of controlling the pain associated with endometriosis by actually stopping periods or 
you know, having a period much less frequently, maybe once every few months or something to that effect. So there's more nuance than what I guess is seen on social media from a lay poison person's point of view. And, you know, I think it's really worth, you know, if, you, if you're not sure why your doctor's suggesting something that they're suggesting, ask them. Ask them why they're, they're doing what they're doing. Sometimes I will say to my patient up front, I'll say, look, you know, we can go down the route of a laparoscopy, absolutely. Um, and and they, they might be hesitant around that because it's a big deal. It's surgery. It's, it's costly. Or there's long wait times if it's through the public hospital system. In which case I might say, well, let's do a trial of the birth control pill and not let you have a period for a while and we'll see whether your pain reduces. And that can be really effective. So, you know, other people will say, oh, that's a band-aid effect. No, it's not a band-aid effect. It's actually a management tool that we use for endometriosis. Because remember I said, we can't necessarily always cut away all of the endometriosis. So even though you, we, you might end up having laparoscopy surgery, the birth control pill might still be utilized as a management tool option.